This is Carl at National RV Detroit and I'm going to walk you through your 2020 Cruiser Model 28 RKS Okay, I'm on the door side of the trailer walking towards the rear Alrighty, so the first thing I'd like to show you is you have, obviously you have power stabilizers You got one switch that operates both rear and then you got a switch up front that operates both front. Um, you don't lift the trailer with them. Obviously, you're just taking the shake out of it, um, stabilizing it. Uh, keep that in mind. Um, also, you have a quick connect for your LP system right here. Uh, that can be used on a, on a grill, or in this case, you have a, a little outside kitchen. And you can pull out your grill here, like so, and there's a, a core or a, a, a hose right here that will plug into that quick connect. Obviously, you pull the blue cap off of it. You got a male fitting, and it goes right into there. And there's a little gas valve on it right here. If you can see it, you'll turn that forward parallel with the fitting itself. Okay, and you have a. A, a small uh, 110 volt AC refrigerator. This is your water heater. The switches to operate it are inside the trailer. I just want to show you this is your drain plug, obviously, and this is where it, it screws in right there. So keep in mind right now this is empty. Um, never light your water heater or turn it on. Um, unless you make you have water in the tank, so always want to make sure you have water in the tank before you turn it on. That's important, obviously. Uh, you got a LED light strip and a power awning. Your stairs fold into the trailer. If you're on uneven terrain, you can pull this pin right here. There's one on each side, and you can you can adjust the length of the legs. Okay. Um, you have uh, power and either a cable TV or antenna or satellite out so you could put a TV outside. This is the switch obviously for your uh, front stabilizers. This is also, this is your hitch. We'll show you how this operates when you pick up uh, your trailer. Now this is a Reese Pro Series hitch. Uh, so you can also go to their website, and if you need to refresh your memory, you can uh, you can uh, watch their hookup videos also. But we'll teach you everything you need to know about it. Alrighty, got two LP tanks with an automatic changeover regulator. Your uh, you got a power tongue jack here. Also, there you can take this cap off, and there's a I think I don't think you can see it. There's a hex in there, and you can actually crank that manually if it happens to fail. Let me see if. We got the crank handy to show you. Uh, yep, back on the other side. Walk over there. So you could use this small crank right here. Okay. You could just put it in there and crank it manually if you need to. All right. So uh, you have this fitting here is just for a solar battery charger. So if you got a bought a solar panel to charge the battery you would plug it in right there this is your deep cycle marine battery and like I stated there's two LP tanks uh, with automatic changeover regulator okay this right here I'm having a hard time seeing as usual because of the, this monitor panel or, or for this camera it's very difficult to see in the in the sunlight so I'm trying to make sure I'm pointing at what I'm talking about right there this is your kill switch for your battery if you wanted to shut your battery off you can go like that um, you can do that when you're in, when you're in storage. You can shut it off. That work, therefore you don't won't drain the battery down. But all other times you want it on. You know the, your tow vehicle is going to charge the trailer. Your when you're plugged into the campground, your power converter is going to charge it. So you always want um, you always want it on, except when it's in storage. Of course, this is just a, a faucet here. Um, the most common way to get water to your trailer is the city water hookup, which is right here. So you're going to hook the hose on there. If you got city water, and you're just going to turn around and turn it on, and it uh, it'll pressurize the entire trailer. Now, if you if you 
are going to camp on a, in a campground where there's not plumbing on the campsites, you can fill your fresh water tank right here and uh, use the onboard pump to pump the water. So you can still, if you don't have, if you're really rusty camping, as long as you pre-fill the water tank, you can, you can operate all the plumbing. This here is a, is a black tank flush. So let's see here. We'll walk back. Here, you got a, your gray tank and black tank here. All right. Right here is your gray tank valve. Right there is your black tank valve. Now there's water in here, I think, so I'm going to actually pull it here. Well, maybe not. Well, I guess there was a little bit. Um, so that's your black tank here. Your black tank is toilet water and waste. So obviously you're going to put your hose on here first, then you're going to put the other end of the dump station. You're going to dump the black first. You dump that because it's, it's um, dirtier water than the gray water. Then you'll dump the gray water second to help clean out the hose. It's just less dirty than the black water, which is toilet water and waste. The gray water is sink and shower water, okay? So if you leave your black valve open, you can come back over here with your hose at the your dump station hose and you can screw it right on here and turn it on and it'll spray the inside of your black tank and clean it out really really well so you just have to remember that you don't turn on the water unless you've got your black tank valve open otherwise too much pressure can build up alrighty there is another gray tank dump right here that's for your kitchen galley tank which is a great probably called gray tank number two all right um, this is just campground satellite and cable and then you got a signal booster right here so that's to hook up your signal if you have a campground cable or, or a satellite uh, dish um, that's just the service panel for your refrigerator that vent up there is the vent for your range hood if you're uh, gonna operate the range hood you can open that up so the baffle in there flaps freely therefore it's not restricted when you're trying to vent to the outside the uh, housing next to it is for a a um, a video or a backup camera so keep in mind that if you want to purchase a backup camera it it uh it has to be a furion camera that fits into that housing right there okay but it's pre-wired for that and then you have a ladder, which is good because you want to inspect your roof at least three times a season. So you figure in the spring and in the fall, you want to go up on the roof and you want to uh, check all the sealant on the roof. Look for cracking or separation, anything like that. Um, if you find it, then you get it taken care of immediately. You're basically, you're just inspecting it to make sure that all the seals are good. But you got to inspect your trailer, roof, and seals if you own a trailer it's very important to do okay let's go inside okay so right when we get in the door we've got um, your panel here so you have your slide room here your awning power awning here when you roll out the awning, it goes out eight feet. And um, when you see, basically, when you're rolling out, you'll eventually see the awning tube. That's how you know you're all the way out. Never leave the awning out unattended. So if you're not going to be at the campsite, roll it in so it doesn't get damaged by the wind. Your slide room is right here, of course. These are just lights. Um, I told you there's a water pump on board to pump fresh water. That's right here. If you want to watch, if you want to light your water tank on gas it's right here your hot water tank and if you want to uh, turn on electric it's right here like I said always remember there or remember to make sure that there's water in the tank before you turn it on okay so these are your levels your batteries charged fresh water is two-thirds but we're water tested black tank uh, number one which is all you have here that's em or empty gray tank number one gray tank number two which is the galley tank okay so you disregard black tank number two all right so your thermostat is very basic you're just gonna uh, light it up and then you scroll through it right there that's air conditioner um, furnace and then off okay now you can't run the fireplace and the uh, air conditioner at the same time so right now I got the switch towards AC 
Um, if you wanted to run your, it got cooler out, you wanted to run your fireplace, you would have to flip this switch, okay? You can't do them both at the same time. This has heated holding tanks. So these are the switches for all of your holding tanks, the gray, the black, and the fresh. This is for your uh, WineGuard 360 antenna. Basically it, it does UHF, VHF, it does uh, AM and FM. So if it's broadcast, it'll pick it up. All right, so down here, this device is your power converter. All right, what it does is it converts 110 AC to 12 volt DC. So you have regular circuit breakers in there, and then you have fuses on the right side. Um, if any of the fuses were to blow, you can see them through that plastic right there, that tinted plastic, so you know that a fuse is blown. It'll light up. Um, also, this when you're plugged in, this will be a battery tender. It'll, it'll check to see how much energy your battery has. Um, and if it's low, it'll send it 10 amps or whatever it needs. If it's charged, it'll just trickle a couple. So it'll, it'll determine how much energy it needs and send it up to the battery. The device next to it is the carbon monoxide and LP gas detector. It should always be green like it is. Um, if it goes off, obviously you take everybody outside, shut off the gas up front and figure out what's going on. Okay, your TV has a televator, uh, which is uh, right here. So you're just going to look at this switch down here. Hopefully you can see it. I'm trying to... There we go. So it goes up. Like so. Looks like a 55 inch TV, I would guess. Okay. It'll stop when it gets all the way up. That's it. So that's the televator, as in TV elevator. Uh, you have a, a chiller here, a refrigerator for bottles, wine. You, got, so you call it a wine refrigerator, but you can, you can refrigerate whatever you want in it, of course. That just runs on 110 AC, so you have to be plugged into campground shore power to uh, use it. Um, your radio right here, you know, it, it, it has two speaker zones, one and two. One is inside, two is outside. You can stream off this USB port right here. Um, you can go into the system through this HDMI. Plus, you can, um, you can, it has Bluetooth, so you can hook up your wirelessly with your phone or your tablet and stream that way. So there's a lot it does. All right, um, your fireplace, you have remotes for, this is a remote for your um, sound system, and this is your fireplace remote here. So we would have to change this over, of course, first. All right, sending the power that way. Then we're just going to turn it on. All right, um, you can adjust the flame. Low, you see it says low right here, that is the fan speed. High is the fan speed uh, for heating, and you can also go to off, right? Um, you can, let's see what else we got here. You can change the appearance of the fire this way, all right? And it also has a thermostat. Or I guess that's the appearance too, I guess, isn't it? Yeah. And um, it, also, oh, it also has a timer on it, so you can set the timer to make it run for as long as you want. All right. So it's a really good space heater. And that's, that's the main thing. It's a really good space heater. So on those days that when you're just going to sit out here in the, in the living area and you, uh, you, know, you don't want to use up your LP by running the furnace, let's say it's late at night or early in the morning, you can just crank that up and you don't have to use any of your LP at all. Okay. So your couch, it's a three panel foam this mattress or these these backs pull right off okay you put them aside then you're going to grab it down here and you pull it out put the legs down and then fold the back panel down you got a three panel high to bed it's all foam you can uh, turn your table unhook your table and turn it sideways and hang it on these cleats right here in between the uh, the uh, dinette benches and then fill in the space with a cushion you got another bed here Alrighty. Um, okay. A microwave looks like any other microwave, except um, this one has a vent built into it. Two speed, and then of course a light also. So it's just part of the microwave. Um, to light your 
um, stove top is very simple. You're just going to turn on light on high, and then you're going to spark it. I'm not sure if I've got the gas on. I don't think he does. Oh yeah, he does. So there you see it. It just lit right there. Um, so obviously you have three burners, three knobs. To, to, to spark this thing, you turn it clockwise. Now for the oven, you have to know that there is a pilot light all on the bottom all the way to the back, right? Trust me, it's back there. I know it's dark, but you'll go to your oven knob and you'll go toward pilot, which is the picture of the flame. Then you depress it and hold it. While holding it in, you spark this by turning it clockwise till the pilot light down here lights. If it doesn't light at first, it, it goes, the gas goes through a very small line. So it, sometimes it can, if you haven't used it in a while, it'll, it'll, it'll take a while to light it. So after you've given it three or four tries and it, if it doesn't light, go to off and then back on again and repeat the procedure, depress it, hold it, spark it, it will light. Once it lights, you still hold this in for another 10 seconds or so to heat it up. Then you go to operating temperature. Cycles like a regular oven does, but when you shut it off, the flame goes out, but so does the pilot light. So you have to relight the pilot light each time you want to use the oven. Alrighty. Simple enough. Kind of works like a water heater. Some still do some lower end water heaters still do but it's, uh, it's the same type of system with a thermocouple and you have to heat it up and that sort of thing okay uh, your refrigerator is a gas absorption refrigerator by Dometic because it's gas absorption it'll run on 110 AC or it'll run on LP gas you're always going to choose turn it on and you're going to choose auto so you can choose it there auto auto means electric the reason they call it auto is because it automatically will search out 110 AC and if it can't find it, it'll automatically switch over to gas or if you're running your refrigerator on regular AC current and uh, you're, you're gone for the day uh, exploring and you're, you have a power outage at the campground for example it'll automatically switch over to gas so you don't spoil your food so you can, you can run it dedicated to gas by doing this but even if you don't, if there's no AC power, it'll eventually end up on gas anyway alright, the only other thing to know is that you need to this is the thermistor. This is how you set the temperature. The thermistor is actually on the end of this wire here and it's inside this. This is just a clip here that holds it in place. You can pull it apart, pull a thermistor out. Um, just keep that in mind. You want to push the whole thing up as high as it goes um, as far as that wire will stretch and that makes it cooler. The higher you go, the cooler it gets, right? And So you're going to want it all the way. On a cold, cold day, maybe you might have to back it down, but generally speaking, you're always going to have it up all the way. All right, so let's see if we forgot anything. Oven, microwave, okay, vent, televator. Uh, so let's head to the bathroom here. Okay, so this is a GFCI. There, this trailer probably has two of them. It's kind of, it's a bigger trailer. But keep in mind, all the plugs are wired through a GFCI. So if you're using the plug outside and it pops, let's say you're using a coffee pot or something, and um, you're always going to reset it inside the trailer. Yeah, okay. Um, the sink and shower work like any other sink and shower. You always want to run your your fan uh, when you use the shower because you want to pull the humidity out because these trailers are built super tight these days, and so you want to exhaust any of the humidity that's created by the shower. All right. So the uh, toilet. The one thing you have to remember is you can't use it dry or without chemical. When I say dry, I'm talking about the black tank. Down here, straight down there is the black tank. And right now it's, it's empty. Um, now, because we still have um, water in the tank, because we're testing it, I can turn on the pump. Like there. Okay. Then, um, we can pump it this way. So, just to demonstrate. So, keep in mind that you um you'll come in here after hooking up your water and your in your power and you'll you'll dump the uh, chemical right in there whichever chemical you use whatever brand you use you read the directions one dose then you're gonna stand on this and you're gonna put about a gallon or so of water in the tank below the black tank right so you do that and it's going to uh, it's going to uh, just keep sending water out and you just use common sense, that's about a gallon or two, you don't have to be exact. The bottom line is you've got to have chemical and some water in the black tank before you start using it. So keep in mind that um, if, for example, if you, uh, 
uh, are going to stay at the campsite for another week, but you have to dump the tank. You would dump your black tank, and then you would come back inside and repeat that procedure. You put the chemical in here and add a gallon or two of water, just some water to get started with, okay? You can't use it dry or without chemical, okay? Also, it defaults to about right here with water. So if you want, people generally want more water in the toilet when they use it. So you can just step on the pedal a little ways. You see the trap doesn't open, but the valve does, uh, does uh, activate. So you can fill it up as high as you want. You just have to do it before you use it each time, okay? All right, so this is pretty self-explanatory in the, in the bedroom here. There's nothing super unique. Uh, this is where you would add a second TV. There's a backer plate right there. There's your, you know, your cable and your, your antenna and some power. So you would use a swing out bracket here. You've got an inch to deal with here, so you want your screws to be smaller than that. When you go through the side of the trailer. There's a backing plate back here. You want it to swing this way, so my advice always is to spend a little extra money and get the, the bracket that locks into place when it's closed. So when you retract it, it'll just snap into place and lock there. Then, therefore, you don't have to hang straps. Straps are kind of unsightly, and it's it's much cleaner install if you just get the type that snaps into place with its own lock. Okay. Also, while we're here, the um, escape window just works like this. You just push it through, and you would push it all the way through. Of course, you grab a hold of the red tab on the screen, pull the screen out, and then out you go. Uh, so if you have to escape in an emergency, that's where you get out. Okay. All righty, I think we've got everything. Let me just look around here. Okay. Yep, I believe we do. Okay, so I want to thank you for buying your trailer here at National RV of Detroit. Um, keep in mind that... Um, you want to inspect your roof, like I said, three times a season is what the manufacturers recommend. Uh, you have to winterize this trailer in the fall, obviously. If you don't know how to do it, you'll have to have somebody help you or take it somewhere. The water heater has to be bypassed before you pump any antifreeze into the system because you don't want to get um, any, uh, any um, antifreeze into the water heater tank because it'll leave a really foul taste and a bad smell that won't go away. So you have to bypass your water heater before you uh, actually... Uh, put any antifreeze into the system when you're winterizing, okay? Alright, so thank you very much and make sure you plan ahead and do a lot of camping. Thank you.